question. My name is Jill Cleese and I am the iSchool's Career Center Liaison. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have the great pleasure of having our 2006 alumnus, Ryan Gann, with us tonight to share his career journey from paraprofessional to professional. He'll also share the skills and experience needed to be successful in today's public library and give us the inside scoop on what it's like to supervise a branch library. The session tonight is one hour. It is being recorded. Feel free to ask Ryan questions throughout his presentation tonight by typing them in the chat box. He's happy to take them as he's going along. That way it kind of keeps the um, presentation a little more interactive. And you are welcome to join us on Twitter by tweeting your comments using the hashtag SJSU Colloquia. I'll type that in the chat box in just a moment. So we are ready to go. So now, Ryan, please do take it away. Great. Thanks so much, Jill, and thanks for having me. Um, it's really great to be able to speak to uh, my fellow uh, students in the iSchool. Um, it's really nice to be able to give back. And um, so, yeah, it's been a, it's, it seems like it hasn't been a long time, but it's been 10 years, and I'd really like to share with you guys uh, uh, the stories of my success and tips that helped me get to where I am today from uh, graduating San Jose State High School. So um, a, little, a little background on my experience at uh, San Jose State. Um, it's where, it's where um, not only I got my degree, but uh, I met my wife at uh, high school. Um, we were taking a class uh, for young adult studies, and uh, you know we still met in person, thank goodness. But um, what ended up happening is uh, we met in class and um, started dating afterwards, and it was it was really interesting. And and now we're married, and we've. We've been together for about, yeah, about those 10 years when I met her in high school. So a little tidbit, I wanted to share that with you guys. So, um, okay, so um, I wanted to get to, this is a paraprofessional's professional, my path from library clerk to branch manager. Um, I wanted, I'm going to be talking about myself a lot, but it's really more uh, for you to, to um, get tips and tricks on how to advance in your career. So. Um, when I'm talking about my experience, you know, feel free to jump in and ask questions about what you want to know, okay? All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the first slide, so let's go. Um, again, I wanted to congratulate you guys. Librarianship is an amazing career. These past 10 years have been great, and uh, it's all due to the San Jose State High School, you know, with that, with that degree. You know, so I'm, I'm really happy that you guys are in school uh, and uh, in the program. So um, again, my background is I started as a library clerk in 2004 at Orange Public Library, and uh, uh, shortly thereafter I enrolled in the high school. And um, in 2005, I was promoted to library assistant, and then uh, in 2007, I believe, I was promoted to librarian, and then uh, just recently I was promoted to the site supervising librarian and branch manager. So. Um, do you guys, I want to, you know, engage you guys in well, what do you like about your um, experience at the San Jose State University High School right now? You know, feel free to type in the chat. Let's get, let's get some more interaction here. So anyone want to join in? What do you like about high school? I'll talk about something while you guys are typing in. I really like the availability of the professors. You know, I could shoot them an email and I would get a response right away. Ah, okay, so Kelly says um, the collaboration with other students. That's great. Um, I was part of uh, the listen group, as it was known. Okay, Elena says teamwork. Great. Collaboration. Oh, okay, there we're also Anastasia. Hey, Anastasia, you know, I was just working with her. She works here uh, at Orange Public Library. Um, so she says uh, she can set her own schedule for classes and lectures. Um, Kate says, I like that I'm finally a part of a community where it's acceptable to list reading. Yeah, I know, we get a little bit of uh, uh, people like, what, you read? What is that, you know? Um, and it's really nice to be among fellow people who believe in reading. Um, and then Anthony says, um, oh, you know, some students like talk about a collaborate. So it, it's a, a, a flip of the coin. And um, But I can tell you, collaboration and group work is a real key in, in the workplace, teamwork, like working as a team and thinking about your teammates. So, um, and then uh, later on, I want to get to know you guys in chat. Um, what library experience do you have already? Um, and don't feel ashamed if you're not working in a library. Um, I've crafted this, this uh, presentation to include you guys too, and finally great tips on how to get library experience. So, 
who's, who, can you guys type in the chat, like you can say, hey, I'm not working in library, um, or if you're a library clerk, or um, a library page, maybe a library assistant. Um, okay, so we've got a library technician, year three is a library assistant in high school, okay. That's great, okay. Um, okay, someone's working as a page. Did university circulation. I did that too uh, uh, at UC Berkeley, kind of working at a specialized library, uh, the Janini Library as well. Yeah, that's right, Anastasia. I know you from uh, working in Orange. And uh, uh, okay, and work as a library media tech in an elementary school. Okay, guys. Um, well, okay, we have another um, a librarian that's working working on the degree. That's great. And so hopefully this will give you some tips on um, maybe my branch manager and actually maybe some tips for uh, a librarian as well. And then we have Alicia that volunteered at a university library. That's great. Volunteer work is very valuable too. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get to the next part. Okay, and I wanted to go ahead and assure you guys being in the iSchool program is a big plus in applying for library jobs. Um, I recently sat in on an interview panel for library assistants, and we weighted being currently in the high school program very highly. And uh, Anastasia Finch was one of those uh, and, uh, candidates and ended up getting the job. That was the uh, panel that I sat on, so just wanted to throw that in there. And um, so the proof's in the pudding. You can ask her about that. So it showed uh, that the candidate is committed to the profession. You know, uh, we, we value that degree, uh, whether you were in the program or had completed it um, as it being a, a commitment to the profession. And as degree of librarians, uh, we were on the panel, uh, we wanted the job uh, to go to someone to help them in the career. So, um, you know, we definitely viewed that on it as a career track. Um, I just want to say that when you're applying for these jobs, and I wanted to give you the, um, this tip, we're, we don't hire, and we were not directed, we were directed um, to hire not for potential, meaning uh, we place people in bands uh, depending on potential, if they could already do the job, and then maybe a third band which were, you know, they, were, they weren't qualified, um, you know, maybe were nice people but didn't have uh, listed on the resume or just didn't have the experience. So again, guys, if you have questions, feel free to interject. Um, so the candidates that came in the highest were, A, they were working on in a job and had the experience already, or they had worked in a prior job and had experience already, or uh, they had volunteered, um, maybe classwork that really matched up, uh, and they talked about their projects that they did in their interview. Um, and so what happened when I was in high school, what I remember, and I was actually reading some of my accomplishment reports that I do, you know, that uh, we send to our supervisor as we do, uh, as we do our work. So I looked at one from 2006 when I was actually a library clerk um, and before I got promoted about what I was doing. And um, a, lot of, a lot of those reports were steered towards the job description of the future position that I had my eye on. So let's say if I was in, <clears throat> as a library clerk, I would look at what does the job description of a library assistant at my organization. So I looked at what's called the classification spec, and then um, I looked at that and said, okay, what am I doing now as a library clerk, and how uh, can my job experience and the coursework that I'm currently taking in the iSchool match up with uh, the job description as a library assistant? You know, the, what is it they want? So, and um, so that was that was a very key point. Um, so, if I noticed that there was a deficiency, let's say I read something in the library assistant description where it's like, you know what, I'm not too good on story time right now. I would kind of think about that. How can I go ahead and um, and uh, fix that kind of deficiency? Like, if they ask me. Uh, if I had any problem, you know, problems, you know, presenting story time, I wanted to be sure um, if I had gotten that interview that I would um, behave, um, 
be able to answer that confidently saying, well, yes, I've presented a weekly story time uh, since, you know, this time, since last year, two years ago, et cetera. Okay, so we have a question from Elizabeth. Um, she asks, is an accomplishment report like a yearly performance evaluation? And when I say accomplishment, that's a very good question. When I say an accomplishment report, it's actually a, m a monthly report. It's like a very um, informal, what did, what did you do this month um, as opposed to last month? You know, what kind of duties did you do? Did you do a story time? You know, if, you, if that's part of your regular duties, list it, you know. Uh, was there a special project that you executed for your supervisor? You know, list that as well. Or if you're in currently in the middle of a certain project or task, you know, I listed that as well. So those are good. Um, if if um, you're not currently doing that now, that might be good for your own um, perspective. I was really happy when I was going through and making this presentation that I had 10 years of reports that I could go through and I had a great time kind of seeing how, uh, uh, what I was doing from way back when and then as going through the years of how I, I progressed. So, so if, if you're not currently doing one now, I highly suggest for you to do one. Yeah, that's right, Kate. It's like kind of a super detailed resume. Um, and you know, you have that resource for yourself where uh, let's say you're going into an interview or you're prepping your resume and there you might be having trouble like, well, I want to go ahead and I, I need some more ammo to, you know, hit this job description that I'm applying for. Um, going back to those reports and including them on your resume and probably creating something that you can talk about when you go into the interview um, is very helpful. So, all right, um, moving on, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, so I was talking about, hey, are you guys currently working in the library? Do you have library experience? You know, maybe some of you out there don't, don't currently have one because, you know, you're going to school and you're very busy. Or, you know, you guys have other jobs, I understand that. Um, but so I wanted to point out, but what if you don't have library experience, you know, take the Info 294, uh, the internship class. It's really, really helpful, I must say. Um, I took one class, uh, one, one um, uh, four credit class for internship and I had, you know, looking back now, and I hope this advice will help you guys, uh, that I wished I had taken another internship class. Um, I was kind of down on the, the public library track, but I think it would have been best if I had taken something like uh, a virtual um, uh, course in maybe reference or cataloging or something like uh, maybe exploring a different type of librarianship, maybe a special library, um, a community college library would be great. You know, I just did a part-time job at a community college library and I was like, wow, you know, this was, I never knew this existed and I wish I had kind of done it earlier. So my, my advice for you guys is, is take one, at least one, two if you can have, uh, have it because um, um, it was a dilemma for me because I currently work as a library clerk and you, and you, um, I was a library clerk, but I didn't have library assistant experience. Okay, Elena asks, okay, so you're in your first semester. I think there's an Info 294 uh, checklist. Um, you can look that up. Um, there's a checklist. I think you have to complete the first core classes. I think it's the three or four class series before you can move on. But definitely, it's not too late to start thinking now and looking at the internship list, which they have up there, and think about, you know, what, what, uh, which ones of these internships uh, sound good to me because more than likely the organizations um, continue from semester to semester and they might be uh, around when it comes time for you to, to take your Info 294. And um, uh, so I have, but it's never too early to start thinking about what you would like to do with that. Um, so here's the thing, the, um, I know some of you guys were volunteers or um, you currently work as a, as a library clerk or, or a, a library assistant um, or excuse me, a library clerk and um, my dilemma was when I was 
employed as a library clerk at the City of Orange uh, Public Library. Um, I couldn't work out of my class specification, my current job, meaning, meaning since I was being paid as a library clerk, I couldn't perform, let's say, a story time on the regular because then I would be doing the work of a library assistant and the, 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 with the strange things how um, city employment laws work, I would be working out of what's called out of class and I would sh should have been being paid at that level. So, um, so I was like, well, how, how do I um, get experience when I can't, though I'm having current experience at my job, but I need more. And what was great about the iSchool degree was the internship. Um, I, I ended up taking an internship at a, a library where I live close to as well, which was the Anaheim Public Library. And so uh, the reason why it was one of the best opportunities that I had during library school was because I could work the reference desk. Um, I could get library assistant experience um, and some librarian experience uh, working as an intern for Anaheim Public Library. And also, um, Due to kind of the sensitivity that at work, I could ask, you know, a bit more questions about, you know, uh, other from other librarians, um, how they were in library school, you know, whereas I wouldn't have felt as comfortable to getting so personal at my, um, at my current job. Thanks, Kate and Jill, for those links of, uh, about the Info 294 course. Um, again, you guys, that internship is great. I also want to say about that Info 294 course, it's best to do it during um, your tenure at iSchool because um, those internships won't necessarily be available to you after you graduate. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately that might be the case, but um, at least those organizations that are offering it to you while you're currently in the degree program, uh, they have had interns before and can put you on a special, special project. So, all right, so let's get on to the next one. Here's more info. Again, um, like I said, you can take up to eight units. Um, and it's better now that you can take it, you can get kind of what's called double credit. You know, you get credit towards your degree and experience for your work portfolio and resume rather than trying to get an internship after the program like I was talking about. Um, you know, and maybe your internship site will have a job opening. You know, um, you, you've worked there as an intern, they've kind of seen your work. Um, people will know you over there and though it might take some time, you know, it might not open during your internship, but when it comes time to apply for the job, uh, you might have that extra little push that like, oh yes, we remember that intern and yeah, let's go ahead and give that person a chance, you know. Um, when, when planning your internship, make sure your projects and your work experience match uh, the job descriptions, meaning, okay, so you're going for your internship and you're um, deciding on what projects you want to learn, go ahead and look at a job description or class specification for a library assistant, librarian, uh, the jobs that you're trying to move up to and uh, come up with a program and collaborate with uh, your, your internship site to, to create something that uh, will be helpful, beneficial for both of you and that's something like, again, more things that you can list and talk about in your interview and on your resume. So, let's see, here are, um, okay, we've got some other questions from Kate, good comment from Anthony, thank you, um, and uh, I'm sure uh, they'll get a hold of you about that, that info. Um, and again, I wish I had taken another Info 294 class. Um, it would have been kind of fun to kind of see what it would have been in a, like a, li a university library setting. Um, I would have liked to be maybe worked in a community college library um, before I had um, uh, waited until like uh, this past year. So um, make sure you get on that early and kind of learn from what I didn't do. So that's what I wish I had done. So that's enough about the um, info uh, internship class. Again, I can't recommend that highly enough. So here's a live, I was a library clerk. Here's um, the library that I had started at. It was the El Medina Branch Library. Um, it's kind of in East Orange and uh, we kind of serve a, a big Latino population out in that area. Um, I started there in uh, December of 2004 
and uh, started library school soon afterwards. So as a library clerk, um, I checked in and checked out books, you know, and I pulled holds, meaning that uh, items such as books and DVDs that patrons had put on hold, I take them from the library collection, you know, and uh, way back when, when I was a library page during college and in community college, um, I do that as well. Um, collecting library finds is a big thing in the public library and shit. So um, it helped me um, uh, learn customer service, how to, how to talk to patrons, to kind of give them bad news, um, find out different ways how to deliver that bad news, and um, convince them how to pay library fines. But, you know, be, you know, being not so firm, but, you know, gentle in, in breaking that to them. And it also helped me kind of give that, you know, librarianship, at, at least in the public library, you have to have like a good, what's called like a bedside manner or maybe a desk side manner in uh, dealing with the public. Um, I also integrated um, my iSchool coursework, like the young adult classes, and since I was taking classes at, um, at a time when I was a library clerk, um, I'd get certain assignments and uh, I would reach out to some of the librarians and I've also advised like uh, other students uh, that were working at Orange Public Library on their classes as well. So it was a good way to kind of ask for a little bit of mentorship uh, while on, on the job, you know, and say, hey, you know, remember you guys took uh, library school classes and uh, had to ask your library, well, now it's time to give back. So don't be afraid to ask. Uh, again, if you're in these positions, uh, you know, and this goes back to a volunteer, um, don't be afraid to ask for extra training, which means um, you, you might get a choice where your supervisor is asking for you, you know, how, you know, hey, is there anything else? And, and you might want to bring up um, extra training, like, Temporary library assistant duties. Now, this might sound confusing where you're working out of classification uh, at a city position, but um, you're, you're able to ask, at least in our city, about working temporary out of class. Um, and, it, and, it, and it could be only a, on a temporary basis. So uh, you could do it as on a project basis, like for like maybe, let's say, you know, a, a certain amount of time. and um, and that'll give you experience as well. You know, again, uh, if that is if that isn't accepted by our organization, uh, maybe find some different strategies to ask it. Um, again, in the interest of succession planning, and that's kind of like a buzzword phrase, which is um, talking about well, well, if someone retires or someone leaves the organization, um, you, uh, it's in the organization's interest to have someone already trained rather than doing training and then having them in the role. So, oh, okay, someone suggested running for the library board. That might be good. Um, I haven't seen that around here, but, you know, I'm, I, if that works for someone and have worked for someone in the organization, hey, give it a go. So um, if they tell you no, um, again, look at that Info 294 class and uh, revisit again. You know, you might want to take that second internship, okay? All right. So. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the library assistant uh, part. Are, are you guys, any of you, the library clerks right now or library pages that want to ask questions about how to pr um, proceed to the next level? Um, you're more than welcome to, to type that in the chat because I, I want to pay attention to how to move from each paraprofessional position to get kind of promoted to the next one. So if, you're, if you have any questions about that, please, please uh, interject. So um, a little bit later in the program, I was promoted to a library assistant. So uh, what was interesting was library assistants still perform library clerk duties. So if you're currently a library clerk or you're doing a volunteer work as a library clerk, uh, increasingly at, at different library systems, uh, library assistants will fill in at the circulation desks or uh, the lending services desks where um, they'll perform uh, basically the duties as a library clerk. So that's a big plus. So if you're a library clerk and applying for a library assistant position, that would help you. Um, so as a library assistant, there's a lot of things that you can do. There's story time, um, cataloging, 
Um, you put on programs, that's very important. Library programming is very important. Library tech work, helping out patrons or uh, staff with uh, uh, e-books are pretty big now, even like just the regular uh, lib um, computer programs. So um, lots of stuff for you guys to do. And, and when you're in these positions, in these paraprofessional positions, you should be kind of looking at, uh, since you are in the degree program, what kind of librarian you want to, to be. Uh, look at your organization and kind of see where people are because uh, you might be a support staff for them in the future. They might be your future supervisor. So, you know, is it adult services that you want to work with? Do you want to work with children? Uh, maybe there's a teen librarian there and you maybe you want to do teen work. Um, Think about that as you're going on and, and be conscious as you complete these projects uh, in doing your work and asking for more duties, how is this uh, building a foundation for me to move on to the next step in my career? And again, uh, we were talking earlier about accomplishment reports. That's great. Um, look at your evaluate, like be honest when you look about yourself when you look at your performance evaluations, which those come uh, hopefully annually, and uh, look at your deficiencies and, and kind of think about making those into strengths. You know, um, even though you may finish the program at high school, like hopefully that sets you on a, a, a path of learning in the career. So, uh, what helped me a lot um, as being a library assistant was trying to say yes. Uh, to duties that uh, the management and supervisors kind of offered me, um, I find that they are able to have a, a, a good perspective on your workflow and, and uh, where you fit in the organization. So what's going to happen in, in the library session and is people aren't going to tell you point blank that if you do X and Y, you'll get promoted, you know. Um, they, and though a duty might be like, oh gosh, this is more work, you know, or oh, I don't know if I, I might not like this. Um, it might be an expression of your libraries, your library organization's need that they are trying to fulfill and they're trying to test you out to see if you are the person for that job. So again, be pretty open. Um, and, and stretch, um, being eager is really well, you know, I, I think um, being eager to take on new duties is a really ha hallmark of how people at least succeed in, in, in my library organization. Um, a big tip, uh, you might be asked to manage volunteers or do some sort of small scale type of supervisorial work. Um, I highly recommend that. Um, that's a great testing ground for you to learn skills on how to manage and supervise someone. Um, they might not be a library staff, but supervising and managing is a great skill to have. It's, and, and if you want to move up, you have to be, be good at it or, you know, like, and, and like doing it. So managing volunteers is a good testing ground for you to gain those skills. So it might be something like a project that you might want to suggest in your internship or if you're currently working in the library about what you want to do. So um, does anyone have any questions about, uh, before I talk more about maybe library assistant to be for the last paraprofessional position to becoming a librarian or being uh, maybe what skills to, to go on to the next level of being a librarian, anyone? Okay, well just interject as, you, as, as I go along. So your next step to librarian is like kind of find out your strengths and how your skills and desires can kind of uh, fit in with the organization. Like uh, people, I know supervisors love hearing new programs or, or services. Some don't. Were all these positions and promotions? Yes, all the positions and promotions were at the same library. Yeah, I worked my way up and uh, this was kind of the trajectory that I did at Orange Public Library. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I can talk about some other things that happened as well. So I'll, I'll save that for the end. 
Um, so if not creating a new program or service, um, seizing again on something how you can expand an existing program or service, you know, that's great. Um, and this is very important. Keep your e-portfolio and plan accordingly for the interviews or resumes that you're putting out and or resumes that you're putting out and look at the job description for your application to library positions and make sure you hit all those points, you know. And your e-portfolio or classwork, you can go in and talk about that um, uh, uh, when you're in the interview and resume. Yes, thanks, Jane. Yeah, I know people, it, sometimes it's a lot easier to move around to different library positions and kind of do your work and then move on. Um, I was very lucky to, to, to be able to stay where I'm at right now. Okay, so moving on. Because, wow, we're, time flies. Okay, so finally I was promoted as a librarian and I came back to the main library, uh, which is located at, off of here at Chapman. Big library, um, had a renovations in 2007. So, again, um, I asked those questions from library assistant librarian. So, remember the high school library coursework that I taught while I was a library clerk when I was asking about young adult classes? I became the young adult librarian at Orange Public Library and I served teens for the past of eight years and it was really fun to uh, plan library programming. Teen programming was a big thing. Uh, planning for their teen area, I put in a game nook where kids could go and play uh, games. Uh, we had a board game night, we had anime nights. Um, I talked to someone from Rancho uh, Cucamonga that did um, uh, Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, is that Anthony, Anthony Bernier? I, um, well, if that's not, forgive me, but um, I remember Anthony Bernier was also in Young Adult Services. I read a lot of his books. Great Kelly teens are a great population. I love working with them. It also makes you very nimble to deal with all sorts of populations. So, um, and teens really need that. They're, they're an underserved population. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate, I keep on saying your e-portfolio and your combined real world experience that you get during the internship. Um, or uh, your volunteer work should match the job description for a librarian. Um, and what comes up in the library description, at least at uh, Orange Public Library, is that there's all that increasing independence that you're supposed to kind of take the library's policies and procedures and um, internalize it. So, you know, it's not, it's not bad to ask questions, but um, it's good it's good to kind of think about doing the work and then asking questions later, like do the work and ask questions later um, and gain that experience and that confidence. Okay, we got a question from Michelle. You're in info today for research and you're looking for a topic. What library trend do you currently see that would be a good topic to research? Um, like probably like the e-library, which is like e-books like databases and then how that fits in with public librarianship, that's a good one. Um, I did focus, Elena asked, yes, I did focus my coursework towards public libraries, but I also took a lot of classes in, uh, in programming and also um, I think we also had like kind of an IT class that we took, so. Yes, and that's right, Jane. Many public libraries get new money from their cities or counties as they expand to different populations. So, okay, moving on. We wow, we're 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 moving on. So finally, I'm the, the branch manager, site supervising librarian at Taft Branch Library. So. Um, when you're a branch manager, you're, you're now a supervisor, and that's a skill that has to be learned. So checking out books, um, I think the five, five Strengths is a good book to, um, and meeting with staff and getting to know them is, is really important. Um, you're, you're not only, you're a part of a team, and it's something that you might not be used to if you work as a librarian kind of working with your own library professionals um, and being a, being a past library paraprofessional kind of helps and since I supervise a lot of uh, library paraprofessionals, I, I know what it's like to be in that situation and I really try to sit down and kind of mentor and try to provide advice, which is not always taken, but you know, I really try and um, maybe something that I give advice for sparks a different discussion that I can speak to. So remember again when you were 
when you were a paraprofessional, that's, sorry, that should say a paraprofessional, um, train, and, and here's something that was said to me very recently, training staff on how to do something like uh, doing a program or uh, doing a certain procedure is different than developing staff. And um, so the, the developing part is uh, interacting with your staff you know, closely, like how are you doing, asking how their day was, maybe asking, prompting them for questions uh, uh, where they might be open to talking about their career ambitions, maybe their other duties that they are open to. Uh, they can provide you valuable insight. They're another person about your branch library. Maybe a different procedure is not going correctly and they have, and they can provide valuable input in order to do something different. That way, you're at the same time delegating work, but you're more doing it in more of a, um, a collegial manner. Again, um, you guys were talking about at the very beginning what you liked about at the iSchool was collaboration, you know, group work, teamwork, working with your peers. And as you're a supervisor, you're not necessarily over someone, but you're, you're part of a team. And I think that's a very fruitful way of how uh, you're a leader, but you're still part of the team at the, at the library. So um, when you're a branch manager, it's, it's good if you walk the walk where uh, that could be from getting up from the desk and walking the patron over there and uh, showing them exactly what they're looking for. Uh, walking the walk can mean, um, you know, you're providing advice and direction and uh, to one of your subordinates and uh, you, you do the work yourself, you know, maybe, and then you, and you're like, hey, I'll take care of that. Um, and being a branch manager, it's like you're taking care of a million dollar building. It's really nice to, to be entrusted with that and to be, uh, and to be trusted with that. But since you're taking care of a city building, uh, you need to communicate with your city's facilities department because a lot of things, they come and they actually do the physical work that take care of you know, the building. Um, you know, sometimes our, my building's kind of old, older, and so when it rains, there might be some leaks that come in and, I have a, you know, I like to think I have a good relationship with the city facilities department. I welcome them in, you know, I kind of, hey, say, hey, how, how their day is. Um, I've got a stash of water, I, you know, I, I, I try to offer at all times. And um, I really try to show my appreciation for them to coming out to take care of the business. I, the business and the building. Um, because uh, though you don't work, you're suddenly starting to work with people that you hadn't worked before, it's good to start on the right foot and build lasting relationships with them right away. You know, get off on the good foot. And you'll hear about something as a branch manager having the golden plunger. And the golden plunger is basically sometimes you're going to clean up stuff. So I do a lot of cleaning here at the library. Not, not a whole lot. It doesn't take up my whole day. But, you know, I pick up trash. You know, I, I throw away things. I, I really try to, I'm um, the caretaker of not only of the, of the population that comes into the library, but the building itself. So, um, and as here at the uh, Tap Branch Library, we have a one desk model, where meaning the librarian and the library clerk work at the same desk. And the librarian does library duties, but also does clerk duties. So that those uh, library assistant duties and the library clerk duties that I had done before uh, have really played a part in uh, my success here at um, Tap. And finally, I want to leave you with that is um, being a branch manager is really rewarding. Um, you are the librarian and you have your own library. I, I walk in in the morning and it's just a great feeling. Like sometimes I just walk around the empty building before we open and just really take in um, how awesome it is to be a librarian and have my own library and um, kind of make a difference, you know, day after day. And I think, um, like I said at the very beginning, librarianship is an amazing career and uh, these past 10 years have been amazing. And uh, I owe it all to uh, San Jose State High School. So um, I want to wrap it up. We've got about five minutes left, but um, do you guys have any uh, questions or anything? Um, we're going to go to the last slide. Again, I just want to reiterate, communicate effectively and often. Think about how you're part of a team. Um, I know we have trying things to try to get along and, you know, um, keep those tempers at hand, you know. Uh, take a workshop and, and read a book on uh, dealing with difficult patrons. And I stress going to conferences, network, and ask the frank questions at 
library conferences. This is how I wanted to get more uh, teaching experience and uh, I asked a former San Jose State alumni and I talked to my former professors. Uh, again, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Jane Fisher. Uh, she really helped me back then with the ePortfolio and she's continuing to help me now and has allowed me this great opportunity to speak to you guys. So um, if you have any other further questions, more detail that I need to go in, uh, my email's at here. And um, so I'm going to open the floor. Um, any questions for you guys uh, uh, while I'm here? How is it working with board members? Well, they're citizens of the city and they can provide a lot of insights into uh, things outreach uh, from the city. So uh, definitely listen to your board members. Uh, they can provide a good input for you. You know, we and um, some of the board members are going to be there a lot and uh, they make a lot of uh, sometimes depending on the strength or weakness of the of the board uh, have a lot of say in your library so it's it's always good think of them as as the public how and um, value their input you know as as you would so thanks thanks Elena for that question uh, Elizabeth yes a mentor was very helpful um, try to seek out those mentor opportunities um, again those conferences when you're at the San Jose State alumni reception. Uh, I highly go over there. Don't they, they have a great spread there, you know, great food and drinks, but make sure to reach out and ask for, bring your business cards and ask, hey, uh, do you, what do you do, you know, um, and if they're matching up with your career desires, you know, hey, can I go ahead and email you and ask questions. That's why alumni are there because they want to give back. So, so Elizabeth, yes, a, a mentor is very helpful. Um, And again, I speak men, you know, send me an email. Yes, um, my my wife currently works as a school librarian for a charter school in Lawndale. And so we, it's wonderful to talk about um, things in the library, uh, in a library world and share books and whatnot. So yeah, she's gotten also a job in the library field. So Anthony has a question. Right, yes, thank Anthony. you very much. And you actually did call me out. Um, uh, I do I do teach full time for the for the faculty and uh, I'm, I'm very happy and very proud that you were here tonight. Oh, okay. Well, it's good to hear from you, Professor Bernier, because you mentioned, you were mentioned <laughs> from Oakland and I was like, hey, I know an Anthony from Oakland that was in the program. I, re I remember your book, your book on yeah. uh, uh, library spaces uh, for, uh, for well, young Well, I'm adults. especially pleased to really see valuable. that you promoted up from, uh, from my librarianship. Oftentimes uh, people don't go into that work because they don't feel that there's a, a ladder up for them, but you certainly have proved that wrong. I, I have a couple of things I wanted to suggest to you. Um, one of them is our, our recent uh, our recent oh, doctoral yes. program has, has produced some really good research on on uh, uh, library leadership, and one of the things that they've come up with uh, in, in 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 that research stream has been the importance of being liked by the people, especially the people to whom you report, be they a library board, city council, uh, school district uh, supervisors, yeah. however. But the importance of being liked is is really important, and it's not just anecdotal. This is really serious stuff. So finding ways for you to to ingratiate yourself, not yes. bending over backwards, but but making an effort of, about being liked. And the other thing I wanted to add before I uh, let you close is that it, you did cover this earlier, but I want to reinforce it, and that's the notion of measuring and evaluating and documenting mm -hmm. your contributions, not simply listing them in a report, but measuring them and evaluating them so that you're constantly improving and you can document and show that improvement over time. It's very persuasive when you're coming up for promotion. So that, that's all I wanted to say. But thanks again, Ryan. Thank you. That's very right, Professor Bernier. Thank you so much for your input, Professor Bernier. He's, he's exactly right. You, know, you need to have that documentation and I hope that that you, that you portfolio of uh, that capstone to the program and the degree uh, is invaluable for that and, and that puts you in the structure of, for a strategy that you hopefully take throughout your whole career. So, yeah, that's a great presentation. I actually was watching a lot of those colloquia, uh, how to structure mine as well. And Patty Wong is great. And uh, if you see her at a conference, approach her. She's really amazing, very open to talking to students. 
Well, any, I just want to entertain any more questions before we close out. It looks like it's uh, 7 o'clock. So, oh yeah, okay, from Kelly, great. So um, the question is, uh, you're currently assistant in a high school library, and, and your, your eventual goal is to be a, a YA or teen librarian in the public sphere. I would say, okay, so if you want to go ahead and take a leap to get to the public library clerk or assistant there. Um, as far as a clerk position, I think since you're doing more independent work, it's, it sounds like at your high school library, I maybe wouldn't take a library clerk position, but I would definitely do a library assistant position to work in a public library. Though you might not be working as a, a doing teen um, work as a library assistant, um, you're going to get your foot in the door because a library assistant is just, you know, a hair's length away from becoming a librarian. And um, so sometimes teen librarians are, are, are split between different departments. Like you might be a teen librarian and do adult services. You might be a teen librarian and work with uh, children's service. Yes, and then also read uh, Voya as well. That great, great articles in that. Um, so I would suggest, yes, please get a library assistant position in a public library. Um, and Jane did also talk about um, that other option. If, if there aren't any library assistant positions in a public library, immediately take the Info 294 internship and then help out with, ask for specifically for teen programs. And the teen some, there's like a lot of work as teen summer reading programs. Um, helping out, pre presenting those teen programs. So I hope that will, the summer would actually be a very good time. Great, great point, Jane. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Kelly, and good luck in your career. Um, any other questions that you guys want right, to ask? It looks like Alicia um, is typing something in. Maybe Elena. It's got, it looks okay, like two people are typing, okay. so we can see if they've got a question for you. Sure, I'm more than happy to answer those. Oh, and I also just want to say, um, okay, or Alicia says, okay, you already have your bachelor's degree in library and science and media, but you're having a hard time finding a job in the public library. You know, yes, I think your degree helps. I think your degree helps. You know, it shows a commitment of you're taking your bachelor's, you've completed your bachelor's, and now you are uh, in uh, the master's program at the iSchool. And I think that definitely helps. You might want to talk about maybe when you're going in for interviews or doing your resume, maybe beef up a little bit of things in order to provide a continuity of work that you did um, in library science and media for your bachelor's and how that's kind of uh, playing into the story of getting your, your master's at the iSchool, I think it definitely helps. Uh, again, if you're having trouble finding a job in the public library now, uh, plan on, on doing the Info 294 class. Again, um, things go up and down, you know. The internships are great. Really, I, uh, they're just really amazing. My internship, I, again, I wish I had taken another one. Um, and you'll find that jobs are opening up now. I just saw like there was eight community college library positions. There's actually four going on now. Uh, we just hired for for two library assistant positions. There are other library assistant positions that are opening. Uh, I know it was kind of dark times before, but things are opening up now. So, so um, I, I just want to give you those words of encouragement. Yeah. And again, talk to talk to Jill and whatnot about more job openings and how to get more career development. It looks like that might be it, Brian. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope you guys took something away from this. And uh, again, my email's up there, so feel free to email me. All right. Thank you very, very much. That was super Thank helpful. You. Oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. Again, thanks yeah. for uh, allowing me this opportunity to give back. It's been very Absolutely. Appreciate awesome. your time tonight. Okay. Thanks, everybody.
Bye-bye, everybody. Um, it was great talking with all of you.